Hey guys, today we're going to work on properties of equality. And unfortunately, this is probably the worst part of geometry because it's proofs. Um, I will try to make it as easy as possible on you. They are definitely the easier proofs to do because it all has to deal with algebra. Um, so you're really just writing kind of what step you do each time to solve an algebraic equation. So first of all, we need to look at all of these properties um, and know what they mean. So first of all, for all of them, it just says if A equals B. All of them are going to say that in the very beginning. So this is just basic math speak. That one doesn't, but this one does. And this one does, and this one does. Okay, so they all start off with A equals B. Then, if you add on both sides, that is called the addition property of equality. So in other words, if you have something like this, and you add two to both sides, you're using the addition property of equality. That's what that is. That's all that that means. Uh, same thing for subtracting. So in other words, if you have an equation that looks like this, and you need to subtract two from both sides to solve for x, that is using the subtraction property of equality. Then multiplication is the same thing. So in other words, if you have something that looks like this, Let's say this one's four. Then to get that three away, you would multiply both sides times three, and that would cancel this. So whenever you're multiplying both sides by something, that's the multiplication property of equality. And then division. So again, if you have something like this, and you have to divide by two on both sides or divide by any number, that is using the division property of equality. All right, the distributive property is basically saying that if you have this and you multiply it times everything on the inside. So y'all have done this before in algebra. You're just distributing everything. So in other words, you have parentheses and you're going to take it and put it to everything on the inside. That is using the distributive Distrib oh, Jesus. distributive property. There we go. Tongue tied. Um, the substitution property is a little bit harder to understand. Um, so it says when A may be replaced by B. So in other words, if you have a problem like this, and then you're also told that Y equals 2, then your next answer, you can replace that y with 2. In other words, I'm putting this 2, because that's what y equals, in for this y. And that's how I got this whole thing. Because all I did is I put that 2 in for the y. So that's what the substitution property is. You're plugging something in. If you remember ever plugging stuff in in algebra, which I know that we have done, because I taught algebra here last year, um, that is called substitution, when you're plugging in. Um, then reflexive property is if you get the exact same thing back. So it's kind of like a reflection. Um, this isn't really something we do a lot in algebra properties. It's something that we do more when we do geometry proofs, which we don't usually do in level. I don't think y'all are going to have to use this. Um, but it's just saying like x equals x. That's the reflexive property. If 5 equals 5, that's the reflexive property. That's all that means. As long as the left side of the equals is the exact same as the right side of the equals, it's the reflexive property. You can think of it like a reflection. All right, the symmetric property just means that you flip it back around the other way. So what that means is when you're solving an algebraic equation, if you ever end up with something like this, we all know in algebra that's okay, that you're allowed to say 7 equals x. But whenever you're doing algebra proofs, it needs to be turned back around this way. So whenever you do turn it back around, you're using the symmetric property. That's what that's saying. It's just saying you can flip-flop it 
across the equal sign. So in other words, these two would flip-flop across that equal sign. That's the symmetric property. Then the transitive property is, okay, so what happens is you see how these Bs are the same. So what the transitive property does is it takes those Bs out completely and it just says that A is equal to C. So A is equal to C. So I have kind of a funny way to explain this, a little bit of a, a little gross, but it works. Um, so I'm just gonna come up with random kid names. So let's say that this, since it starts with an A, this is Ashley and she is dating Brayden. But Brayden is also dating, I need a C name, Celeste. Well, that means that Ashley, oops, I used the A twice. It's A Ashley. Ashley is dating Celeste, which is kind of funny, a little bit gross. Um, but that's what it means. And it's an easy way to explain it to you where you will understand it. But um, it's just saying that you remo remove the thing that's in the middle and you use the outsides as your next equal. All right, so in this one it says, using the properties of equality, properties of equality can be used to justify steps in solving an equation. So if you guys ever looked inside of an algebra book or any math book before, frequently the algebra would be on the right-hand side, but on the left-hand side they would have blue words saying why they did each of those things. That's basically what a proof is. We always use a two column proof, which just means that there's gonna be two columns and on the left, you're gonna do the algebra and on the right, you're gonna say why you did each of those things. So the left are the statements or steps or we're, that's where we're actually going to do the algebra. And then on the right, you're listing the reasons that justify each step. In other words, why you did each of those things. So what can be used as reasons? Properties, any properties, any definitions, any postulates, or any theorems. Okay, so this is what a proof looks like. And you have seen this many times in algebra, but now we have to say why they do each of those things. So first, let's look at this left-hand side and let's fill in the missing pieces, the parts that we normally will write when we're solving an equation. So to get from step one to step two, what did you do to get to step two? Well, they added one to both sides. So because they added one, it's the addition property. Well, here's a faster way to do it. It's the addition property of equality. So that's kind of how we write this one. So this one would be addition, oops, addition property of equality. This would be subtraction property of equality, multiplication property of equality, division property of equality, uh, distribution, we normally do distribution property, uh, substitution, we normally just write sub for that one, reflexive property, symmetric property, or transitive property. Those are all of the um, short for, forms of all of those. We normally do not write the entire property out when we're doing proofs. Okay, so we added one to both sides, which is the addition property of equality. Then to get from two to three, we divided by four, which means it's the division property of equality. So always, always your y's come from diagonally above where the question is every single time. All right, on this one, what did we do on each step to solve it? So first we subtracted two on both sides. 
which means it's the subtraction property of equality. Then on the next one, we would multiply both sides times negative 6. So that is the multiplication property of equality. On this one, the first thing we did is distribute. So that's the distributive property of equality. Or you could just say distribute. I forget. We do things different in level than we do in Pravy. Then to get from 2 to 3, we subtract 27 from both sides, which is the subtraction property of equality. Then to get from 3 to 4, you divide by negative 18, which is the division property of equality. And just to be fair, none of this should be here. I write it there so that you see why I'm right, why we're, these are the answers. Um, it should really look just like this. All that extra stuff should not be there. Um, I just write it there so that you know what we're going to write as our reasons. In this one, they subtracted 6x from both sides. So since they're subtraction, subtracting, it's the subtraction property of equality. Then you added 17 to both sides, which is the addition property of equality. Then you divided by 2 on both sides, which is the division property of equality. Then they flip-flopped around the equals. I kind of went over that before when we were going over these. It's this one right here. Oops. That one. It flip-flops around the equal sign. So it's called the symmetric property. Symmetric. And then we're done. All right. This one... We distribute, and same thing over here, we distribute. So this is the distributive property. Then we com yeah, combine like terms. We combine that one and that one. So we didn't actually give you this property, but you can say, there are two things you can say. You can either say simplify which is more proper, or you can say combine like terms. You can do it either way. You don't have to do both. Um, simplify is shorter to write, but sometimes it's hard to remember simplify because you think of combining like terms. All right, next we subtracted 12x from both sides, which means this is the subtraction property of equality. Then we added 14 to both sides. Oops, I can't write 14. There we go. Which is the addition property of equality. Then we divided by negative 15 on both sides. Which is the division property of equality. And that's the end of our notes.